thank you for being with uh, me today and being on this Zoom. We're going to talk about all things in the world of Cindy McGill and Jesus and the nation, <laughs> the United States of America. Uh, tell me this, Cindy. First of all, thank you for being here. Oh, and thanks for having me. For being on. I'm looking forward to you being at Crown. We're so excited that you're coming to Crown this year. Um, tell me what you see for 2024. I want to know what you see by the spirit for 2024 for the church, for maybe even the nation, good, bad, and ugly. I want to, I want to know what you, what you see, because I know God speaks to you and you hear the voice of the Lord. And I know that you love Jesus with all your heart and you're out winning the lost and do it everything you can to make a difference. But what, what is your, what is your spiritual eyesight saying right now, Cindy? Well, I think we're, we're heading into some, I was just talking about this on a podcast I did for my Facebook page. I haven't done one forever. And um, I kind of thought about the uh, rogue river. Um, we went down in tubes, you know, in inner tubes, we yeah. rode the rapids. Okay. And that's in Oregon. And uh, there's classes of rapids that you go down. Right. And so when you get to a really uh, important one or a, a class, whatever, four, five, three, whatever. I never went to the big ones. You have to wear the helmet, you know, and sign the release. Right. Right. <laughs> so, um, but you have to work in the boat as a team in order to get over the rapid. Wow. That's what you have to do. Wow. And you have to make sure that you don't lose anybody in the middle of it. Wow. Because you have to it's, work in the boat as a team. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because you have to uh, guide it and make sure that you don't lose someone on the side or that they don't fall over or that they, um, you know, you, you get past our, the rocks and all the stuff that's in there. Cause you don't know what's coming. You don't know what's up, but what you do know is that you're all in there together. Everyone's got certain leverage that they're going to lend toward the boat, uh, getting over that rapid and getting onto the next part of the, the river. Right. And then you'll be smooth smoothly going along or you'll at least catch your breath and then here you go within the next 15 10 minutes or whatever you've got another one now the uh, the new one the new rapid is not like the old one so now you have to uh, consider and wage it out and talk it out and figure out how we're going to put ourselves where are we going to place ourselves how are we going to navigate this how are we going to move uh, do we need to move to this side of the river or that side of the river or this kind of thing and I think that's what's going to happen. I think from one one event to another, we're going to have to carefully consider how we're going to do it. I don't think anything's going to be the same. I don't think that we'll, we're we're going to be um, we're going to have to consider God and whatever it is He's asking us to do, and the timing of how we do it, and that you know everyone what, keeps their you know focus. What, you know what, Cindy? That's that is exactly how I feel about twenty twenty four. Uh, mm -hmm. I made the statement one prayer morning. I said, I believe that we're entering into a year where we're going to pray about what time we go to the store. Yeah, I don't doubt or, that. Or um, should I get on the plane for this? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. you know, it, and it sounds really dramatic. It sounds like a dramatic <laughs> statement. And, um, and of course I have a flair for the dramatic. So, okay. Mm -hmm. we'll just admit that, but I'm not being dramatic. No. I sense in my heart that, and I, I don't just sense, I know in my heart, I know mm -hmm. in my heart that we're going to see, we're already in revival, Cindy. We're I know. Revival. America's yeah. in revival. It might be, you know, to my, to my ankle, but we're in revival. Yeah. I, I know we're going to see an increase of the outpouring of the spirit of God all across this nation. Yes. And, um, I, I shared this with Papa Che and I've shared this with several different ones, but I'll share this with you. I had a dream several months back and I was in a multi-story building mm -hmm. and in this building, it was not a skyscraper, but it was a very large multi-story building. Mm -hmm. And there were lots of leaders in that building. Mm -hmm. And it was mostly Christian leaders and saints in that building and other Christian leaders. We're all visiting and talking. And I hear the Lord whisper in my ear, get out of the building. That's right. I'm, I'm not 
kind of fearful. It's not like I'm thinking, okay, we're all getting ready to die. I just knew it was an urgent call to get out of the building. So I began to say to everyone around me, we must get out of the building. We must run. And that's what I heard the Lord say, run, get out of the building and run. Mm -hmm. So we began to get out of the building and we're running. And as I'm looking, we're actually in a formation of like birds. It was kind of, we're in a formation of birds and, and that's how it looked. And we're running and I, and we're 150 yards from the building. And I look back and the building blows up. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking, we should be dying because we're too close to that building, but Mm -hmm. we're immediately flying. Yeah. Right. And it was propelling us forward. And then I think we should be blowing up, but we're going up. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. so I woke up from that dream (laughs) and the far, and the Lord said to me, when I woke up that morning, he said, Callie, he said, this dream is multifaceted. And I'm going to give you different perspectives of this dream. And all of them are going to be right. (laughs) And it was very short. So the first thing I thought is everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Right. The next thing I heard the Lord say is it's time for the church to get out of the building. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, and there were other different ones that poured in on that dream. Then I get to DC with Jenny. And this is, you know, maybe a month after I'd had that dream, I get to DC with Jenny and, you know, we're going 90 to nothing. And all of a sudden I, I have a break there and I'm the 63 year old one of the bunch that does not have all the energy they have. And I'm going back to the hotel for a 30 minute nap. I mean, right? I, just, I need a nap. So I lay back on my bed. I didn't like completely prostrate kind of in a, in a, a recliner type position with pillows. And I doze off and I'm back in that dream. Yeah. And I'm flying in that dream and I'm in Mm -hmm. heaven. And all of a sudden I realize I'm on horse (laughs) and I've got a sword in one hand and I'm building and strategizing with the other hand. And then we're in heaven and then we would go down on earth and we would ride on earth and we would do things on earth. Then we would ascend back up into heaven and ride in heaven. And then we would ascend back down on earth. And I woke up. Well, there's a few things I'm picking up on this. Um, One is it was a multi-level building, which tells me that you'd been going from level to level to level to level. So it wasn't just a entry level building or just a one level building. It had several levels to it, which uh, talked to me about growth or it talks about, you know, spiritual maturity or that kind of thing. And so getting out of the building was really important. Um, I, I'm, as you're talking, I'm reminded, I did an interview just recently with Katy Perry's mom. Wow. And um, and her dad was on the phone. Was on. The, she had him on a. a, a Mary had her f- husband on the cell phone, and he had a dream. And in the dream, he said, "I had a, a experience on Labor Day." And he said, "I had two dreams right in a, in a row." And he said, "I was standing, and all of a sudden, I shot straight up into the air, wow. and I was flying." And it had something to do with horses as well. So now wow. you're you're in a completely different place. You don't know each other. And now you're having very similar type, very accelerated, very, very um, quick and powerful type of experiences in dreams. But he had one in real life and then also had two dreams to confirm what had happened to him. And so we're in an accelerated time right now where things are going to happen very quickly. And I think it was in end of October, maybe 1st of November, I woke up in the morning and God said to me, um, unusual miracles. Wow. And I knew that we were headed into a time where we're going to see things we've never seen before. Wow. And they're going to be completely different and unusual. We're not going to even really, uh, it would, it, again, hadn't thought, we hadn't thought it up. You know, it's not something that you just see all the time. Right. Um, And I thought we're headed because of the type of times that we're stepping into, um, things are going to accelerate very quickly, very rapidly, and and things are going to go very high. People with prophetic gifts are going to have supernatural prophetic, even uh, uh, on uh, this going to go up notches that we've never known. We haven't seen and seers and people that see and that kind of thing. 
uh, the prophetic is going to be like almost wide open, like open heaven type stuff. Um, and we're going to have an advantage because we're in a battle and the battle belongs to God, but we're in a battle and we're in tandem working with heaven to see his will accomplished on this earth. So in order for us to do that, we have to have a uh, visual. We have to be able to see and understand and know and see from, from his perspective, uh, what is it that we're heading into and what are, what do you need us to do? How do you want this facilitated? How do you want us to carry this out? Um, I think as we move forward uh, in taking the head off of Goliaths that have been threatening and, and uh, shouting and uh, trying to intimidate and trying to do all this stuff, there's those that are just going to show up that God's appointed uh, with no type of weapon, nothing in our hands, really. Um, and it'll be, okay, I want it done now and I want it done this way. Yeah, and whatever we have need of will be right there at that moment. One of the things that I'm just now, well, I've seen it, but it's like even clearer is we are going to be required to live an ascended lifestyle. Yes. We're not going to be able to function on earth if we're not mostly in an ascended place. Uh huh. Yeah. Because we have to see things from that perspective. We have to be able to know before things happen. What's going to happen? Like you were saying, it'll be time uh, that God will, uh, something will happen. We'll just get a nudge. And and if you think of thoroughbreds, okay, let's think of racehorses for a second. They're so well-trained that, that they know the jockey very well. And if the jockey makes any kind of move, that horse knows what to do. Yeah. Yeah. It'll stop if, if, if the jockey leans back a little, it'll move forward and advance. If he goes forward a little, it'll turn to the left, it'll turn to the right. They're just so well connected that they don't, the horse doesn't have a problem. It doesn't have any issue knowing what to do when the jockey makes certain moves. And that's because of uh, their connection. That's how they've been, uh, he's been trained. They've been together for that long that they, they know each other very well. And so, um, that's kind of how we're going to go. The, 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 the slightest nudge will tell you, hang on a minute, or there'll be something that will happen. You'll drop your purse. You'll, you know, you'll forget something in, in the car uh, or in the house. You have to go back in the house to get it or whatever. And you would have uh, come up on something that would have been tragic. You would have been right in the middle of it. Had you not, you know, dropped that thing or um, my mom, oh, she's not here anymore, but uh, she was reading the newspaper one day. She's my dad had already gone home. He'd already died. And uh, she was uh, living alone and she was reading the newspaper, doing the crossword puzzle. And uh, she leaned forward. She had a beamed ceiling in her den and she leaned forward because the paper flew off of her lap and her rocker, you know, in her recliner. She leaned forward to get the paper and the beam from the ceiling fell right between her and the chair. Wow. And if she had not leaned forward, it had killed her probably. It would have killed her. It would have hit her right in the head. And I said, Mom, you got angels watching over you. I'm talking where, you know, she was going, well, she I could tell you so many stories, but these are so important. She's going to get bait. She's a fisherman. She's going to get bait. She slipped in the mud and broke her wrist. A compound fracture. Her her wrist was off to the side. She drove herself home and parked her boat in the garage around a curved driveway, unhitched it with just one hand, drove herself to the hospital. And when she got there, they, they took her blood to set her hand, right? They took her vitals. She was half empty of blood. They found a cancerous tumor in her colon. And they said, had you not come in here and had you not broken your wrist, <laughs> I'm like... I, I was like, how, how does this happen? This is so out there. It's so bizarre. And yet they found the tumor. They were able to, it was all contained. It had not, you know, colon cancer is a, is a number one killer, right? And so it's a silent killer. But uh, so there's things like this that I'm paying attention to. And it's almost like God's going, that was just a sign for you to know. I'm, I'm, there's going to be certain things that may happen. Don't get upset. Don't lose your focus. Don't get don't get worked up about certain things that don't go your way because there could be there possibly very possibly could be things that I need you to to hang back a minute. Yeah. Or I you know I need you to advance forward 
yeah. you know, you did make that light. You did get ahead of that train. You yeah. did. You never. And so I just feel like we're heading into those times and because you remember this to whom much is given, much is required. So when you've got the open heaven and you've got the ability to see and dreams are being poured out and you're getting information from God in the dream world and in, in the natural, and you're starting to see angels, which are already appearing all over. That's what happens with revival. And that's what happens in, in every move of God. There's always angelic activity going on. And, and um, when these things start to happen, you're, you're in a different realm. You're, you're now moving in a realm you weren't moving in even a year ago or six months ago or whatever. And um, it will make you be a whole lot more attentive to what God's saying, the still small voice, yeah, right? The yeah. still small voice so that we're not just, we're not just taking cheap shots, so to speak, or, or just leaping forward because we did it like that last time. It's going to work like that again. Well, that may not be true. So I just think we're heading into these times where you don't, we're going to be given some vision, but, but God's going to make us depend on him to hear his voice, to listen yeah. to yeah. what he says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe that too, Cindy. I've never, I've never not, I've always believed it, but I believe it more now than ever. It's, it's so mm -hmm. real to me that mm -hmm. we are, um, we're seeing some of the greatest things we've ever seen and we've things we've prayed for for decades and years. Oh, I know. We're mm -hmm. seeing the fulfillment, but we're also seeing some real shaking in all kinds of areas. Um, yes. And I think we're headed for some real economic shaking next year. And um I also believe that there's going to be other types of shakings. But here the good news is God's the answer. He's got all of our resources. He's got mm -hmm. all of our strategies and he's got the harvest that we're supposed to go after and we will go after and we will see that harvest, um, yeah. harvest you know? Well, provision follows placement. So when you're in the placement that God has for you, provision will be there. He'll create a supply chain. He'll he create what he needs in order for you to fulfill what you're being placed there to do. And I think that's where we need to be very, very flexible right now. We need to be not holding on to things. If he wants us to move or to relocate, or if he wants us to, um, you know, to stop doing certain things and start doing other things, then we just need to be willing to, to do that. Wow. I feel, and, the I feel the Holy ghost on that. I feel the Holy ghost on that. Will you pray right now for those that are listening that, um, and for us that obedience and, um, obedience. Yeah, yeah. Obedience and provision follows placement. It really does. So yeah. pray, pray that right now, because yeah. there are many people who are watching this, that that's exactly where there are. God is requiring them to move and do something different that they've never done before. Right. And it feels scary because their stream of income came from somewhere else. Yes. So mm -hmm. pray for that right yeah. now. So God, I just want to thank you that you are our supplier. You're the one who supplies all of our needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And Father, you said you own a cattle on a thousand hills and all the gold and silver thereof. Yeah. Yeah. And so God, we just say right now we're depending on you. Yes, we're we're drawing from you and from your resource uh, bank of what you need for us to have when we need it and how we need it. And God, you're going to bring it from, I, I think uh, there's going to be billionaires that have been uh, resourced that are going to be pouring into the kingdom because they see that uh, the people that are doing something about what the problems are, they're going after it. Um, and I feel that God is going to uh, create more uh, young yeah. ones that are going to be billionaires overnight almost. And they're going to have, but they're going to be uh, rescued by his spirit. And they're going to understand that this is uh, for God, you know, and for his kingdom. So I thank you, Jesus, for giving insight and giving us yes. the ability to hear and see, you know, what you're doing to lean on you heavy, to yes. know that you're the one who provides all of our needs that we're not yes. going to be wanting or crying out those days are over uh in terms of lack the days of lack are over wow uh, the, the days of lack are over 
Uh, yeah. When he owns it, you own it. And when he has it, you have it. Yes. And when he's uh, providing, you are provided for. Yes. And um, so I, I feel that we're, we're, we're not going to shrink back in this hour. We're going to just move forward in yes. going about our assignment. And that's another thing. We've been given assignments and we're being given additional assignments or maybe improvements to assignments or maybe another facet of an assignment that we've been given. And we're not going to stop doing the assignment yeah, because people don't like it or whatever. It's like, well, you know, we, we've got to, we have to take this on and go forward with what he's been showing us to do. Um, and I feel like the creative, uh, uh, with the seer anointing, with the open heaven, with us being able to see from God's perspective what he's got and what he's doing and how he's going to do it. And we're, we're kind of who he's going to align us with. That's the other thing. You know, I was thinking about the boat thing with the rogue uh, and everybody was uh, uh, in that boat who had certain strengths, you know, and they had strengths and abilities and they were, they were skilled in areas I wasn't skilled in, but we were all in the same boat, right? And so we were able to lend all of our strength to each other, which then caused us to have successful ride down the river. Um, so yeah, and I think there's going to be um, uh, creative things that are going to take place. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, creative um outpouring from God, from heaven, and it's going to shock the world. You know, I think it's going to just, it's going to blow their mind. I don't think they expect us to be good. <laughs> they don't expect us to be smart. They don't. The world does not expect us to have supernatural ability to, to create and to come up with things that are, that are so far beyond what they do. Right. And right. I think what we've done is what we've, we've cowered down I'll just make be real honest. I think we've cowered down to what, you know, AI or this computer thing or that thing, or they're going to take this image or do this thing or whatever. And it's like, well, God is the one who really, nothing happens without it crosses his desk first. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he's going to protect, he's going to shield. He's going to be uh, your shield and your buckler. He's going to be the one to go before us and to, protect us in the very thing he's shown us or given us to do. And then uh, there'll be uh, creative things that will take place and you'll have patents on those things. And you'll be able to, to, to say, God gave me this and it's for the world, but it's also for the kingdom. So that's, that'll be another re uh, source of income for people, you know? So yeah, I do <laughs> I just believe this download. I'm like, okay. You know, I do I'm believe. I do believe that God is going to take care of his people in very creative, unusual ways. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And, we and songs, I know that you've got a lot of people in the music industry and uh, new songs will be birthed from out of, they've already been written. They just need to have a mouth to be dropped in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're going to be singing them and everyone's going to, you remember that guy, there was this guy uh, out in the middle of nowhere and he was singing about the, rich men north of richmond and he yeah. was just singing to his dogs they had three dogs laying there remember that uh -huh. and, uh, and it just went viral and he wouldn't take any i mean he didn't he didn't want any money for it or any of anything else he was just singing the truth oh, that's and the truth so was going out and making people wake up and everybody was like oh my god everywhere you turned it was on it was on at the gas station at the grocery store it was on the radio it was on everywhere you turned that song was coming on and he, he was from nowhere he was just from nowhere. And I think he was a sign of things that are getting ready to happen. They're going to come out of nowhere. I don't know if you remember it crowned. I think Jack kind of, Cindy's son taught on this, but he, he said that uh, in World War II, when um, Winston Churchill, you know, he took the leadership, he became prime minister, that he had, he had tried for a lot of times. I mean, he had been in politics a long time. He'd just been a miserable failure. He was a real brash guy. And he just couldn't get anywhere. He was not a man that they would vote in while a country was in peace. But when they went into World War II and they were threatened by Germany and Hitler, they voted him in because they knew he was the man for the job. Whether That's you right. liked him or didn't like him, whether you thought he was good or you knew he was solid, he had grit, he believed in the country, he would he would stand for what was right and true. And of course, he was voted in and he was a major part of why World War II ended the way it was supposed to end. You could come in. 
Um, Here's my point. There is a lot of people that God is raising up in this last day that they wouldn't be good for anything. (laughs) Right. And I'm probably one of them. Well, me too. (laughs) Yeah. It probably wouldn't be good for anything. But in times of trouble. Yes. In times of trouble, in times where things are turbulent, they're the ones, these outliers, these people that have been in caves that nobody knows, the, the, the inventions, the, the ability to trust God. Uh, they're not the cool kids on the block. <laughs> they're the little weird ones. I, I consider myself one of the little weird ones on the block. Yeah. That God said, you know what? There's something about you and your <laughs> love for me and your dependence on me. And mm-hmm. yeah, you were a screw up way back there. I mean, a pretty right. bad one, but you, you're redeemed and set free. And God is bringing these leaders to the forefront because we're in a war time. Yes, that's right. We are absolutely yeah. in a war time. We're in yeah. a time that if the church does not awaken and the body of Christ does not stand at attention, we could lose it all. Yeah, I think I think we're people are waking up to that. And I think that God's allowing people to see, look, if this is what's been going on, what we did is we left our place at the gate. We did. We got caught up in everything else. And then the enemy just came in and plundered. And we should have had, he gave us what we needed and what we should have had and all the things that we needed. We've been freely given all things that pertain to life and godliness, right? But we left our place at the gate. And when we did that, that's when uh, all the stuff came in, all of it, all all the wicked stuff. So now we've got a job and the job is we have to go regain, retake the ground and retake our place at the gate where we were supposed to be all along. And now we're just going to have to um, find out what his uh, strategy is in gaining that ground back and setting people free. Yeah. And um, I also felt like that he said, uh, you need to keep low and keep uh, keep wise, wise as serpents is, is the best thing you can do right now. Yeah. Just yeah. be real wise as serpents and, um, you know, just keep keep quiet about certain things and, and let him um, give you direction. And you carry that out without telling a hundred thousand people. And um, God will give you specific information on what he needs to do and, um, and how he wants it done. Yeah. And I, he's, he's literally equipping an army. The remnant is coming alive and he's equipping an army. And he's, he's saying to us, if you, if you'll do it, if you'll step out, if you'll be obedient, mm-hmm. if you'll go, cause these are treacherous times. This is times yeah. of war. This isn't times of peace. This is times of war. And if yeah. you don't have the eyes to see it, you'll get it. That's why the men of Issachar were so important. They understood times and seasons. Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. And we are in times of war. We're in a war for the soul of our nation. We're in the war, a war for, for a lot of things, but ma- basically in America for the soul of our nation. And I yeah. believe that God's going to come through. I believe the church is arising. I believe that we will stand up and do what we're called to do. But I think you're right. We're going to have to go go, go in prayer, go in fasting, um, really submit ourselves to the Holy ghost and then allow him to work through us to bring in the harvest and see this nation turn back to God. Yeah. And then when, when we do, and he gives us, and we do take the ground and he's, um, and we've been able to see that the enemy is, is defeated there and he knows he's defeated there. Then we're going to have to be diligent to stand the ground yeah. and to take it and, and not, not just relax and just, you know, and God will bring relief and he'll bring others along and that kind of thing. But, um, but I feel like that we're, you know, and he'll strengthen us too. He's going to give us strength, even in our latter years, he's going to give us the strength of youth, even in our latter years. So I also um, believe we're going to see a profound move of God here in Texas. Oh yeah, I know that. I found a move of God here in Texas and a shifting in our political arenas. Yeah, uh, it's going to bring even more righteousness and more um, um, solidarity to our political arenas, to our yeah. church 
our religious arenas. Uh, there's going to be a standing that takes place here in America that is going to be a model for the other states. And we're going to see, I don't know if you've kept up much with what's going on in uh, Arkansas with Sarah Sanders and yeah. just uh, the thing she's standing for. I mean, she's a pretty incredible leader. I mean, yeah, yeah. pretty incredible leader, but she's just standing. She's standing for righteousness. She's just not yes. taking too much. She's, she's, uh, she's, she, we need a, we need a million more like her for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the, but the example of even Sarah Sanders and what she's doing in Arkansas, I see God doing that in Texas. I see, um, a major blessing of God on Texas and some shifting to, to ward out anything that would try to uh, detour the will of God for this state, because this mm -hmm. state is going to lead in every area, in every area. And so I feel really blessed to be here. I, do you have anything that you want to add to that? Has God showed you anything about Texas? Well, yeah. I mean, we had to move here. He, he moved us here. Yeah. Yeah. For, you know, don't move. Here. Yeah, I know. When did you move in there? I, I don't remember. 2019. 2019. I mean, what? I'm born, I'm a native Texan, but we lived in Utah and in Oregon for a while, you know, and then most of it in Utah. And uh, we got recultured, so to speak, you know, with the four seasons and the yeah. outdoor stuff and skiing and all that. And then God moved us back to Texas in uh, 2019. And I was like, I mean, we went on the map trying to figure out where we didn't want to move, you know? <laughs> Texas didn't come up. We thought, well, at least we, we know that area. We can move there. But then we got here and we started seeing all the little fires. It seems like God's lighting fires. Here's the other thing, though, that we're going to have to really be careful of and be aware of is that um, there's a gossip about us um, that's untrue. And uh, we're, we're declared or just uh, people are, are saying, you know, that we're um, uh, some kind of a domestic terrorist or whatever they say, you know, whatever. And so it's lies and it's a, def a defamation of our character and yeah. that kind of thing. And so I feel like that we're going to have to uh, not fight back with words and try and defend it. All we need to do is we just need to do. We just need to be. And when we be. When we be, then it's going to it's going to reveal itself. In other words, show itself to be what it is, and um, and God's going to be behind us, and His glory is going to come on us. What He said, I love and, that. Yeah. So be, we don't have to defend lies and wrong, uh, you know, uh, labels and whatever else has been uh, attached to us. You know, I was looking at the Rolling Stone, uh, <laughs> Jenny, you know, I was like, That's you made it, girl. You made it to the cover well, of the I Rolling said, This is what I said. One thing they got right, she's a rock star for Jesus. <laughs> she, is. she is. And I thought, this is funny. It's like, nobody said a thing about Trump. They said Trump supporters yeah. uh, into some kind. And I thought, we're moms. We're yeah. mothers. That are gathering. I've, I've, that never heard, I've never heard Trump come up in one rally. <laughs> so there you go again. It's like, well, we'll just throw that out there because that's a, it's a trigger word. It'll get everybody all worked up that reads Rolling Stone. But, you know, I, I'm out there, had been out there at Burning Man with the Rolling Stone people that write all that junk. And they're a bunch of ding-dongs, you know, and they're all high most of the time. So I thought, well, this is just great. It's almost as if it's just going to reveal itself. You don't have to go and defend it. You don't have to oh. say anything. All you need to do is just be. And when you are, then you God puts his glory on you and he diffuses and defeats all of the labels and the misconceptions and the gossip and slander and all the stuff. So, you know, you, you'll have people stand in line to tell you this or that or that or this. And you're like, well, I don't listen to that. I listen to the voice of the good shepherd and the voice of another I don't listen to. And, you know, I'm not all those things and whatever. And I feel like this is where word of knowledge is going to be extremely good. I think God's going to really come on us with the word of knowledge. And we're going to have information about someone that he wants them to know that, you know, yeah, so he and then they're going to be shocked. <laughs> That's what it talks about in 1 Corinthians 14. It says, if there's any among you and, and a, a secret of the heart is revealed, it says they fall on their face. 
That's yeah. exactly what it says. Uh, they fall on their face and say, surely your God is the God of gods and the revealer of secrets. It's the same thing that happened with Nebuchadnezzar when Daniel was able to tell him his dream and the interpretation of the dream. Uh, yeah. And even though Nebuchadnezzar was an evil leader and he didn't change at that moment, he fell on his face yeah. and said, surely your God is the God of gods. These are the kind of moments we're moving into. Oh. And it wasn't any knee jerk response. It was just that, you know, that, you know, that you've just been given information and that information is now a, a Kairos moment for you to give it to that other person. And now their hearts are open or it freaks them out or it peels them back like an onion. And now they're going, how how do you, what, what, how did you get, you know, I've had people say, well, you're the best psychic I've ever heard. And I said, I'm not a psychic. I said, I just listened to the one who made you. Yeah. That's where my information comes from. So now they're going, so now they know that God's going to expose things and he's going to bring people into a place where he's going, I know you. I know this and I know what you're me meant for. I know what you're made for. And there's going to be a lot of people coming out of uh, traps of uh, identity confusion and yeah. out of um, uh, all the things they've, they've, uh, they've shrouded themselves with thinking they're this or they're that. That means transgender the whole bit, you know, and they're going to come out of that and they're going to go, oh, my gosh, this is the real me. This yeah. is the organic me. This is the genuine me. This is the the real me, the way that I'm made to be, you know, without all the uh, preservatives and weird stuff and all the things that's happened. And I just feel that there's going to be a, a safe place for them to be able to come. Right. And they've got to be loved and and embraced when they come because they're going to need all the support they can get well, they from sure all the stuff. And we've got to be in the right place to mother and father them and disciple them and love them through the transformation process that the yes, Lord will bring through. Absolutely. Uh, before we end this today, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for everyone that's watching that mm -hmm. we will have the heart of the father and we would become oh, yeah. everything that God's called us to become in serving the lost that is about to be saved. The harvest. Yeah. Is begin. See, getting them saved is is wonderful and that's not you know that's but that's not the hard part the hard no. part because i believe people want to come to jesus all day long if you show yes. them jesus they want to come but the where the challenge is is we have to love them through the trans transformation oh we do we have to love yeah. them the transformation and we've got to be willing to take their stinky and their dirty and allow them just like god takes our stinky right that's exactly words that work that's words why i wrote it it's like, that's exactly what we have to do. But it's also the book of Acts, you know, because once they repented and then they came into a place where they would understand yeah. the power, power of the Holy Spirit and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and with power. And then it says they went from house to house, breaking bread, which is community. And right. then God gave to the, to the church the, daily, those who were being saved because they were safe places. Yes. They were places yes. where they could come in and they were broken and they'd been in a, a, a deception. They'd been in a horrible place where they, they didn't know what they were, what was going on. They'd been used and abused. They'd been prostituted. They'd been whatever. And, and yet God gave them, it says he gave them, gave to the church them daily. Those yeah. who were being saved because now they had a place where they could be fed and they could be loved and they could be taken care of. And that's what we have to be. And we have to see that we would want that. We yeah. would want that for ourselves. Yeah. And I do yeah. want that for myself. I want a place where I can come in and broken and I can freak out and go, you know what? I just, I just need somebody to hug me. I just need somebody to love me and to, to not judge me and just give me help, you know? Yes. And that's where we are. So that's what that's what God's gonna do. And so I just want to pray that right now. Lord, yes. will you just massage our hearts with yours? God, would you break our hearts for what breaks yours? Will yes. you give us uh, your ability, God, to 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 just love well yes. and to love right and the, a love that doesn't fail and that you would teach us how to love because you first loved us. Yes, God, we have to remember that you first loved us. That's how we learned how to love. And so God, we just thank you for that. We thank you for giving us all things that we need in order to, to be you to them, to say what you say to them, to use your words, to hear your voice. And God, that you're going to teach us along the way too. And you're going to heal us as he, as healing words flow out of us yeah. to others. 
And so I thank you for a wall of protection over this ministry, over Callie, over over Jenny, over her voice, over all the things that they've taken this stand to do. I thank you, God, that you've surrounded them with angels and warring angels to protect them from every fiery dart and everything that would try and come in and 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 take them out or to uh, uh, cripple them in any way. I thank you for finances pouring in from heaven, the storehouse of yeah. heaven. Prove me now and see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Yeah. There is not even room to receive. And so yeah. I thank you for that, God. And I thank you that you're doing it now. I thank you. This is a now season. And I, I thank you uh, for fine tuning our ears to hear you in this time that when we get over one of the rapids, God, you're going to give us that breathing room to get to coast down the river till we get to the next one. And then you'll give us instruction on the next one. And then we'll coast down the river and you'll give us instruction on the next one. And you'll add to us the ones that need to be in the boat with us during this time of uncertainty. And um, God, you are a very certain time and a time of uncertainty. Amen. And we look to you and we thank you, Jesus. We do. We just hold on to you tight. And we just want to feel your presence. And we just want to be real tight with you. So if you nudge us, we know to turn left. We know to turn right. We know where to go. We know when to stop. We know when to go. We know what to say. Amen. So I just thank you for that, God. Yeah. Cindy, tell us where to find you. Like, if uh, first of all, anybody that's listening, if you want an incredible uh, minister of the gospel, Cindy's just incredible. She's not only uh, revelatory and powerful, but she's funny and she <laughs> is just a, such a joy, such a fun person and just really always has something powerful from the Lord to share. So any ministry that's listening, that's looking for someone to preach, that'll come and really bless your people <laughs> and bless the work of God. She's the woman. And then she does all these incredible outreaches. She goes all over, just really sharing the love of Jesus in places that, that most people won't go, but she, right. she goes and she's just a good soil to sow in. So Cindy, tell them where to find you. Um, my, my website is cindymcgill.org. Okay. Um, and so then I have uh, some resources on there under shop. Uh, you can see the words that work. It's written for woke culture and for all of our years of going out to the Burning Man Festival and hanging right. out with all the crazy people out there and then going to the porn convention, which we're going to be doing in January again this year. Wow. Wow. In fact, I have, I'm going to go right from a uh, crown to wow. Vegas. So I'm wow. going to be getting lots of prayer because we're, we have a booth in there this year and we okay. haven't had one of uh, just one other time. So, um, but Cindy McGill.org, uh, make sure that you get words that work in methods that in the madness, it'll be a field guide for you as, as it pertains to this era of people, this yes. culture, not yes. people 50 years ago. Yeah. You know, we're not going to reach people with the same tools that we did 50 years ago and have a different result. We yeah. have to change what we do and how we speak and how we communicate with people. So words that work will help you and to feel his heart for people who who sin differently than we do. Right. And that have lived in lives that are different and apart from us. And we have to remember that Jesus ate with people he didn't agree with. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And if we don't, if we don't get that, we've missed the whole boat. Yeah. We've missed the whole boat. Uh, it's so important. Now I've never had a problem with loving people and being around people I didn't agree with. Yeah. I, my personality actually kind of lends to it. I'm okay mm -hmm. with it. But that the the church at large, we have to change our way of thinking. You can't yeah. win somebody that does not like you. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. And, you know, the Holy Spirit convicts of sin, not us. Yeah, that's exactly right. We don't convict of sin. And we, we're just to be available to just love them and let them come in. And we I've got so many stories I could say. Oh, my gosh. You know, but I'll, I'll probably save that for Crown. But, All right. Uh, I love you so much. Listen, Sandy, you. you're a blessing. You're a blessing. <laughs> You're a blessing to me. You're a blessing to the body of Christ. Thank you for ha taking some time being with me today. And uh, we'll see you soon. I can't wait to see you at Crown. Yeah, be great. Right. Be blessed. Right. God bless you. Bye.